So what the heck is a down country bike? Isn't it just a long travel cross country bike? And isn't it all just mountain biking anyway? Well, there's some subtle differences that could make you love or hate your new ride. So stay tuned and I'm gonna explain all. In the words of Canyon, downcountry bikes aren't cross-country bikes, but they sort of are. Now, downcountry was a term coined to categorize this new breed of bike that sits somewhere between cross-country and trail. It should have all the speed and efficiency of a cross-country bike, but all the confidence and capabilities of a trail bike. However, it should be lighter and more nimble than a trail bike but also it should be more fun and versatile than an all out racing cross country bike. A rider wanting a pure cross country bike for battling out on short courses will want something light, stiff, and probably aggressive in the stance and the gait on the bike. And this is to get optimal performance for sprinting and climbing. However, this style of bike might be quite fatiguing for someone who wants to do long distances or a casual long ride out with some friends. Equally, a trail bike might be great on long distances, it might be comfortable, but also it can be quite cumbersome and maybe a bit sluggish where it's designed to focus on descents and maybe shredding in the woods with your friends. Cross-country bikes tend to have head angles of between 68 and 70 degrees. Now this gives you a more forward leaning position so that you can be more efficient at pedaling but also keep the weight and the traction on the front wheel for those steep climbs. Now, down country bikes tend to have a head angle of between 66 and 68 degrees. This is a lot slacker, which gives you a neutral position when you're in the saddle pedaling, but it also helps you shift your weight back for descents and have an overall more stable and confidence inspiring ride. Down country bikes tend to have a slightly longer reach and a longer wheelbase. Now, a longer reach will make the bike feel more stable and confidence inspiring at speed and on descents, but it might feel a little sluggish in tight turns. So that's why the cross country bike favors a slightly shorter, more nimble ride. Now this is Doddy's extra large Lux Trail, but if it was in my size, the reach would be about 25 millimeters longer than my Exceed race bike. And the chainstays would also be 10 millimeters longer. Now this longer chainstay will also contribute to that longer wheelbase and that more stable, confidence inspiring feel, but also it gives better clearance in the rear triangle for wider tires. Now, me and Doddy are actually running very similar widths here with the 2.25 and a 2.35 on the back, but a downcountry bike being able to take bigger tires with bigger volume means lower pressures and more comfort for those long journeys. Now back in the early noughties when I started racing, it used to be that a cross country racer would pick a hardtail and a down country or a marathon rider would pick a full suspension. However, most of the racers in the World Cups these days are running full suspension. And I would say most of them are on 100 mils of travel, although Nino Scherter did just win his world championship for the 10th time on 120 mil full suspension. So I admit the waters are a little murkier these days on distinguishing between the two bikes when it comes to suspension. However, I would say that 120 to 130 still is pretty commonplace when it comes to specking a downcountry bike. 
Also, you might find that you have slightly thicker stanchions on the forks, say for example, a Fox 34 instead of a Fox 32, whereas an XE bike will want something skinnier and lighter for their racing rig whereas a thicker stanchion and longer travel will give you a bit more of a plusher, confidence-inspiring ride for those long rides out in the downcountry. Whether you pick a hardtail or a full suspension bike, a cross-country race bike will really focus in on being light and stiff, which might not be that comfortable if you want a downcountry bike. Now, also downcountry bikes, because they're not focusing on that lighter weight, you can get them in aluminium as well, which might give you a bit of a saving, almost up to a thousand pounds in some cases, which might be more valuable to you if you're not trying to win medals. Drivetrain tends to be the same between cross country and down country, although you might find on down country bikes there is more options for affordable drivetrains, whereas cross country race bikes might be specced with slightly higher drivetrains. One of the biggest differences though between the bikes, I would say, is the rim widths. So cross country race bikes like this tend to be between 20 and 30 mil in widths, and that's so they can run between 1.9 and 2.3 inch tires. Now, the reason for that is because XC tends to focus on less materials and lighter weight, whereas the downcountry bikes tend to be around about 30 mil wide so that they can run 2.3 to 2.5 inch tires. That will give you a wider tire, which means bigger volume and the ability to run lower pressures, which is just more comfortable, especially over long distance rides. Cockpits on cross-country bikes tend to be pretty low. You'll often see drop stems, so a bit like mine here, which has a negative rise of 17 degrees, and that is just contributing to that forward position again. It keeps your body centered when the bike is pointing upwards, and it makes it extremely efficient for climbing. Now, unfortunately, this can be quite fatiguing over long distances, especially if you are not strong and flexible and fit enough to maintain that position. Downcountry bikes tend to have either a neutral or a slightly higher cockpit. So this one here has a plus seven degree rise. Now this keeps the body position up and back and it will be a more comfortable position over a long distance ride, but also it'll be more confidence inspiring when you're descending. It'll also be easier to shift your weight back if you're tackling technical terrain. Also, you can see here that this is a two-piece setup with a handlebar and stem, whereas my Exceed race bike is a one-piece cockpit. So you really need to know what you want if you're buying a one-piece race bike, whereas a downcountry bike will often be specced in a stem and handlebar combo that you can change up depending on what you're tackling that weekend or if you just wanna play around with bike fit more. Now you can get double water bottle bosses on cross country race bikes and even dropper posts as well are creeping through onto uh, XC race bikes. I mean, the purist among you might only want one water bottle for aerodynamics and lightweightness and they might want a rigid post to again, save more weight but the downcountry bikes are definitely more common when it comes to more water and a dropper post. And I certainly wouldn't spec a downcountry bike without all of those things to go out in the back and beyond. But anyway, what do you guys think? Is there a real difference between cross country and down country? Are you cross country or down country? Let me know down in the comments below. Thanks for watching.